Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damian James, and this is the next episode in the Modern Mythos Magic Miniseries slash Pop Culture Magic Miniseries on this channel, where we discuss how to carry out successful magic, manifestation, and spiritual work using your favorite pop culture entities. So I realized in the last video, I said what's probably going to be one of the most controversial things I will ever say on this channel. And surprise, it's not about the new age. It's not about magic or spirituality. It was probably something I said about Star Wars, that I am not the biggest Star Wars guy. But anyway, after I finished that episode, I said to myself, I actually do know one to get Star Wars fans inspired, to give them ideas to on how they could work with Star Wars characters for manifestation purposes. Also, this may catch the interest of people that are into crossroads style workings, working with trickster entities, so on and so forth, or those that are interested in expanding but may feel uncomfortable working with a traditional entity like a Hakate, a Lucifer, a Loki, so on and so forth, based on what they've heard. And I'm not saying there's anything right or wrong with those entities. So for those that do not know, a lot of occult authors, magicians, so on and so forth, will speak of the use of having a trickster entity in your corner to help you out. A trickster entity, more or less, or my interpretation, is an ambivalent entity maybe one that is feared or misinterpreted by people that specializes in a certain kind of work. Usually that, as they say, making the unmanifest manifest. Beyond some lingo, that basically means you're looking for an ambivalent entity that can roll up its sleeves and play dirty a little bit and help bring you certain results, outcomes, physical manifestations. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because at a fundamental level, um, when you're, if you work with any deity at the crossroads or any math station work, you're in this sense kind of asking the universe to smuggle you some money, some resource, whatever it is you want. It could be that magic book. It could be that new tarot deck. And I think that's okay. But with that being said, when you look at it from that angle, you can have a lot of fun with this. In this case, you could work with a smuggler like Lando Calrissian, Han Solo from the Star Wars universe based on the premise that they're smugglers and that's okay. Smugglers can be good guys and that can serve you very well. Now, before we talk a little bit more about this, I also want to just make note of why this could be fun, accessible, and safe for the practitioner. A lot of the at least chaos magician that inspire me will basically tell you that all gods will basically have some kind of hidden agenda. They may try and trick you. That could be another reason the term trickster is used. It's best to just be looked at. They are ambivalent. It is a business transaction. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't get hung up on it. So what? Well, one thing I find is when you're uncertain with an entity, there's the whole element of getting their attention, finding the correspondences that they like, so on and so forth, and the matter of safety. What I find is when you look at these tricks or entities, you will get a lot of conflicting accounts. And as always in magic, you have to remember a channel like this, myself, anyone who speaks at magic is speaking to their subjective experience with magic, the spirit, the outcome, whatever. Therefore, we're all highly questionable and not reliable to a certain extent. And I'm not saying that's to trick you. That is the reality of the situation. And I understand why there's reason for concern and there's a good reason to be. You don't want to conjure up a deity and find out the hard way that they don't like you or now you have to deal with them or they followed you or whatever. And I'm not saying that will happen. But with that knowledge, one of the other advantages I find off right off the bat is that let's say you do a Han Solo at the crossroads. We'll talk about some ideas at the end, but let's say you do a Han Solo at the crossroads and he's got a big red lightsaber or a, he's got big red eyes for some reason or horns or something or something just feels off in contrast to your understanding of who Han Solo or Orlando Calrissian can be. And it doesn't have to be a Star Wars character. Once again, it can be from any universe that suits you. But anyway, with the traditional occult stuff where you don't have that perception because Lucifer is just an entity you heard about 
about a book or Hakate it may just be something you heard about in a Shakespeare play in a cult book. Once again, you can check on Star Wars, your experience with it, and say to yourself, does this feel like the presence I would expect from Han Solo in this case? And if not, you probably know that may not be a work you want to carry out. The other nice thing with the trickster entities and offerings is I find it's more fun for you and more fun for them. With the occult books, a lot of it is get them incense, get them this, or get them something really, really, really obtuse. And it's almost like when you don't really know someone and you have to get them a gift in Secret Santa or whatever. And at least I feel like you're just kind of, for lack of a better term, part of my French, half-assing the whole thing. And if you knew somebody, it probably feels more good to really take some time to find something they would like. Now with Star Wars, that may sound tricky because you can say to yourself, well, how could I get anything in this world that Han Solo would like? Use your imagination. They're always drinking weird colored stuff in Star Wars. Just get some milk, put some green food dye, some blue food dye, whatever, shake it up, bring it to the crossroads, there you go. Or I'd assume that a lot of those blasters, the lightsabers, whatever, probably draw their energy from some kind of gemstone. So you could get some red or orange gemstone at your crystal shop, just a nice affordable one, and give it to him for ammunition for his blaster. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. But beyond that, we talk safety. It's easy to see why that could be safe, more safe, more fun, so on and so forth. What I want to do now is give people some ideas on how they could really turn this into their own working. Yes, you could go to the crossroads and just conjure up Han Solo and it'll work and it'll be a lot of fun. Or you could think more in terms in where you would actually meet Han Solo in this world if you were real. Or this physical reality, I think it's better to say. This is why I'm not a fan of the term pop culture. But anyway, consider where Luke meets Han Solo. He meets him at this bar, right? This weird dive bar. Now, do I expect you to go to a bar and do a meditation of path working and say some things? No, but you could try something like making a sigil for Han Solo, setting up the arrangement at your altar, and then here's something I might do, or I would do in your shoes. Go to a bar with that gemstone, whatever, and ask yourself, is there a drink Han Solo would like? And act as though, you don't even have to talk out loud, but just almost act as though you were Luke meeting Han Solo. Put on some music, just sit in a corner and imagine the experience or set it up beforehand once again. Either way, what I would do is with the tip, I might leave the gemstone and ask for a drink on the way out and pay, leave the fresh one there for him. You don't have to explain to the bartender why you left the fresh whiskey there or whatever. And Han Solo would probably drink some whiskey. He seems like that kind of guy. But do something like that, and that still fulfills the step of the crossroad, which is you just tell the demon what you want, you give it the stuff, and you turn, you walk away without looking back. I interpret it to be symbolic of not questioning yourself and not questioning the work. What is done, what is done, it cannot be changed. That's the angle I look at it. But when you look at it there, you're kind of still following the idea or honoring the tradition or the concept of the crossroads ritual without doing it the traditional way. And with that knowledge, Han Solo is great at smuggling you things once again. It could be that tarot card. It could be that occult book. Would I personally ask Han Solo to smuggle me a snowman? No, but I'm not saying you could or you couldn't, but use your imagination. If there's something from Star Wars you wanted, something from that universe, I find they are beyond amazing at making those kinds of things happen because that's their natural element, let's just say. So you could do things like that. Magic doesn't always need to be to solve all our problems and or our biggest obtuse problems. Some of the best ways to try this out would be something like that. Is there a Star Wars collector's disc that maybe you just don't want to spend the money on? I bet there's a Star Wars tarot deck that probably costs a lot of money because there's only a few around. You could ask him to smuggle it to you at an affordable rate or something and kind of treat that as your first business ordeal and consider more in the future. Something along those lines. 
while I want to keep a lot of my own my own personal experiences private right now because then they're, they're in the experimental stages and without bragging I'm kind of in a no telling mode here with this for my own sake um, I have done comparable things and gotten very similar results you could use your imagination to assume how I went about it based on those universes the kind of outcomes that may have happened and just roll from there and it's pretty much that simple the other thing I like about these spirits is that I find that you're going to always, and I know I keep saying this, but you're going to pick the ones that really resonate with you, the ones you liked growing up or the ones you like now, because those are the first ones that are going to pop into your head. Not looking for the correct spirit to get you the thing, like it's some insurance salesman or third party thing. And I'm not saying you can't, but you've already built a relationship with this thing. And they're very apt to respond for that reason. Because one thing I find, and I'm not saying this is what you do, but what people do is they conjure up a deity just because, and then things don't go their way, or they wonder if there was a sketchy deal. And the way I look at it is, we don't like it when we have that friend, do we, that just calls us up when it needs a favor and says nice things. Why would a deity be any different? Where's the friend that's been good to you, the friend that says nice things about you, the friend that hangs out with you just because they enjoy their company? or your company is the one that you will go out of your way for. And to me, that's the same idea here. There's very little difference. You treat a deity the way you would treat a human. I know there's a balancing act, but you try to bring as much of that into it as possible. And once again, the offerings are gonna be more fun. The whole work's gonna be more fun, at least in my eyes. It's a great way to get into character, literally get into spirit, no pun intended. And it's that simple. And the last thing I want to say is the other reason I honestly think this works is this is what it means to be a co-creator in my eyes. We're not just trying to talk ourselves into something, force ourselves to feel a certain way, just following rules for the sake of a result, using a deity as a means to an end. We are still working with the traditions, working with the ideas, working with what they say, but doing it in a way that still honors who we are and speaks to us authentically. So we're pretty much taking who we are and we're merging with magic, merging with the universe simultaneously. That concludes this video. Give it a like, give it a share, subscribe if you enjoyed it. We're always going to have more Modern Mythos Magic coming. And please, if you guys have um, requests, so on and so forth, topics, ideas, drop them in the comments and I'll be happy to see if I can add something to it or maybe throw on that movie, do a little bit of digging and see if I can find anything to help you guys out. But for now, have some fun with this. Let me know how it goes. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Eudaimonia, everybody. And in the case of this video, may the force be with you.